Hi guys, Samantha from Jessie My Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a bonus tutorial on how to use the scraps from our Frozen Riverstone tutorial that we did last month. So here are the scraps after I had cut out my beads so you can see there's just lots of little bits and pieces that don't really work with anything, you can't really use them for much so we could be using that and we also had that leftover pastel that I said I'd show you what we would do with it so I'm going to show you what to do with it now so what you're going to need is you're going to need to cut these into strips so I'm just going to cut these pieces out okay and you want to just place them together like so doesn't really matter what order you put them in and if you're wondering what that splashing is in the background my sisters are in the pool so they might make a little bit of noise in the background don't mind them okay so you can see that I'm just taking all these pieces and I'm just sticking them together in some sort of a fashion to form a solid sheet and that is what I would do with all of these scrap pieces just like that and so you can see that all these pieces are together nicely and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flatten it out so it's one solid piece and then I'm going to bring over my blade because I've got a little bit over here that I'm not very happy with because it's got this strange black greeny colour on it. There you go. Okay. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and square this up into a square-ish shape. There you go. And I'm going to run it through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. just to make sure that's even and then I'm going to cut it into strips again and I'm actually going to cut those strips that I did in half because I didn't make them as thin as I'd like them to be there we are and I'll just pick that up off the tile and I put one piece over there and then I'm going to put this piece just a little bit higher and I'm essentially going to form a bargello with it now this is not something that I've tested this basic this tutorial is basically a live feed of what I'm doing as I'm messing around so it's not an official tutorial so this could turn out terribly but I thought you guys might want to see what I did with the scraps live because I can't really experiment I can't really prepare for this ahead of time so let me know how you feel about these um, a webcam sort of tutorials where I haven't I'm just doing it as I go I'm not really planning anything I do have a rough idea in my head but basically I'm flying by the seat of my pants at the moment which is something I don't usually do so let me know how you feel about this whether you like it whether you don't and based on that I might start doing it more because I do a lot of things like this and this is how I like to experiment so let me know if you like it or not so I'm quite happy with how this is looking so far There we are. That's what it looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going for an official bargello shape. So I'm just going to fold these ends in so that we form one sheet. Okay. 
And I really like how it's looking so far. Didn't expect it to turn out this well. There we are. Okay, so now I'm going to run it through the thicker setting again, going in the direction of the stripes. Okay, now I'm going to go down to my fifth setting. My thickest setting is a number seven. And again, I'm going in the direction of the stripes. And there we are, we're flattening it out. I'm now going to go down to my fourth setting and I'm going to go in the, op in the opposite direction of what I had before. There we are. So that's flattened it out pretty well. I'm quite happy with how that looks. I'm just going to flatten that out with my roller just to make sure that it's properly flattened out. And we'll put that aside for the moment. And in the meantime, I'm going to bring over some white clay. And this is Kato. And I'm just going to roll this into a sausage. Thin sausage. And I'm going to break it off into pieces like this. Just kind of nuggeted sections. Okay, now I'll bring over that packet and open it up. And I'm just going to tip as much of the powder into that one area as I can. And I'm going to drop in a few of these at a time. I'm going to shake it around. Okay, and now I might want to add more powder because basically we've used up all the powder. So I'm going to bring over some more powder. Okay, so I brought up the, over some more powder. So I'll open that up and I'll bring over my selected colour. And this is just a selection from the pastels that I had last time. I'm going to shave a bit of that in. A bit of that in. Maybe some of the lighter one. And some of the dark one. There we are. And then I'll drop a few of these in at a time. Because I don't really want them all clumping up. And shake it around to get them covered in that pastel. And once I've done that, gather a few more, close up, do the same thing and get those all covered in pastel. Yeah. And so I might need to add more pastel. So I'll carry on doing that until I've coated all of these. Okay, so I've got them all covered. Whoops, just making that a little brighter. Okay, and so you just want to give it a good shake to make sure that each of these little part pieces of clay are separate. Because you really do want them separate. So I'll go in there and see if there are any touching. So I don't want that. There are clumps of clay. Just make sure to go and separate as many as you can. Okay, there aren't any more. And then once you've done that, give it another shake and it should cover up those. There we are. So now what you want to do is you want to dump them all in one corner of the bag and Poke a hole in the one corner of the bag and start twisting. And this will help push these pieces together because at the moment they're covered in pastel so they're not going to be very cooperative as far as this goes. So I like to do it in the bag first and then come take them out and do it by hand. Okay. So now that we've got them shaped into a rough piece 
most of them should have stuck together. So now we can take it and stop pushing it together. And this is going to take a little while, so I'll probably spend all the next two minutes or so getting this to compact together. Okay, so I've got it all compacted. Now I'm going to bring over my tissue blade. And I've also cleaned up my, de my tile as well. And I'm going to cut. And there you can see that we have this nice stony look. And then I'm going to, so that looks nice. I'm going to pop that over to the side and I'm going to bring over a piece of white to put them on. Okay, so here's a piece of white. And I'll just take these and gently place them on top. Don't worry if you're getting smears and things at the moment. Um, that's probably, that's most likely going to happen. So don't worry, you can sand that off later on. So I'll just continue cutting slices from this and I'm going to cut thin slices because I don't have much to work with here. But it's a nice way to use up your leftover pastels. Okay, so all the pieces are on. Now I'm going to bring over my acrylic roller and I'm just going to roll it. I'm fairly happy with it. So you can see it's been stained blue. Don't worry about that. That can be taken care of. Just getting rid of the excess white. Taking that away. Then I'm going to bring it over to my pasta machine on this middle setting, which is a fall for me. And I'm going to run that through just to flatten it out completely. Now let's see if we can get rid of this blue stuff. So I'm going to bring over a wet wipe and some 99% alcohol and I'm just going to give a good spray over the wet wipe and then I'll just place it over here and burnish it. See if we can get rid of that. There we are, it's coming off. Okay, so I might need to change sides and spray this side again. What I wouldn't do without is 99% alcohol. So it's not going to get rid of all of it. You're going to be hard pressed with that. Um, you're still going to have to give it a good sand. Don't expect that this is going to get rid of all of your problems. It's just going to reduce it. So, I'll continue working at this, see if, how much I can get off, and then we'll move on to the next step. Here we are, all finished. So I'll just bring over our two pieces. And you can see they go together quite nicely so we're going to be making a pendant from this and that will be the next part of the tutorial and I'll show you how to put these two together nicely okay so I'm going to be using this cutter and there'll be a template for this to download in case you're wondering and I'm going to cut out this shape from each of these pieces. Excuse me if my head gets in at any point. Okay, so that's run through on the third thinner setting of my pasta machine. I'm just going to run this through on the third thinner setting just to make sure that they're all um, the same thickness. That's very important. There we are. Just 
gently brush that up. Now do the same here. Now I want to choose a nice section. There we are. Move that out of the way. Okay, and now gently gonna coax this up. Both of them. And now don't worry if they get a little bit out of shape at the moment. Place them on top of each other very carefully. Don't stick them onto each other. Just gently place them down. And my head needs to get in over here. Okay, so I had to make that cut off, off camera because my head was way in the way over there. Now I'll lift off each of these carefully. Yeah. And I'm just going to bring over my craft knife, pick that off, and there we are. Okay. So now we have these two pieces, and that's going to go in the middle. And I'm a little bit off camera, so I'll do that here. very fiddly so apologies if I start to mumble because I mumble when I concentrate there we are and then just squish these into place so that all the pieces are touching together happily and we'll do the same for the other one like that then I'll bring over my acrylic roller and I just want to move my knives aside and I'm gently gonna roll this bit. and I'll do the same on this side just to make sure that it is flat okay and then before we cut it into our shield shape I want to just bulk it up a little bit because it's very thin at the moment so it's going to distort so we want to put that onto a white backing and this is a piece of white that was rolled out on the middle setting of my pasta machine. And I'll bring this over, place it on top of the white and gently smooth it down on top. And I'll bring that over for you to see better. Bring over my cutter and excuse me if my head gets in at any point. Just checking. And I'll cut it out. Yeah. Now we have a nice shield shape. And I'll do the same for the other one. Just like that. And now I'm going to just bring over my tissue blade. And go around just carefully. Get rid of any little bits of clay that are left over like that and then I'm just going to smooth off the top to make sure that we haven't got any fingerprints and now we do need to do the backing and I think we might as well make the backing this seems silly not to so I'll just flip it grab this pick it up Sorry, I'm off camera again. Keep doing that today. Place that there. Place this on top. Bring over my cutter. Excuse me if my head gets in. I just need to cut this out. Okay, so I've positioned it to right. Now I'll just make that cut. Pick that up and again want to trim up the edges. There we are. So just 
pick this up for you to see. You can see the back's all nice and finished off. And the sides need to have a bit of a clean up, but we will do that after it's baked. We just want to smooth off the back a little bit, and the front's all nice and smooth. Now we want to attach our bale. And so I'll just quickly move these out the way. And just quickly scrape everything off the tile because there's a few little bits that are getting stuck to the tile. And I'll bring over what is left of that bargello. And here it is. So very little left. But there's enough to make a bale for each of the beads. So I'll put that aside for now. And I will cut out a flat area, pick that up, and flip it. Bring over a skewer. And very carefully fold that up. Mark off where it is. Move that out the way. Okay, and there you can see it meets up pretty nicely. Now this bit's a little tricky. Got to get it to fold over itself so that we don't have that seam there anymore. Just go around and check that there aren't any cracks because sometimes there will be. There was just one there. Okay. And I'm just going to go with my knife and butt it up so that we get a flat end on each side. And there we are, we can now gently remove it from the skewer. Now pop this down on my tile and tap the end with my finger to kind of flatten it out. Okay, then we'll bring over one of our beads and flip it around. Okay, and I want to just check that this is symmetrical still. Okay, and I'm going to bring this over on the point of my skewer. You want to find that seam. So the seam's there. You want to flip that around so that that's on the bottom of your bead. And stick that onto the back and remove your skewer. And that will be your bail. Okay, so I'll pop that to the side and I'll do the same for the other one. There we are, they're all done. Now if you have a logo and you want to mark your piece, uh, now's the time to do it. Don't forget to do it before you put it in the oven. I do it too many times. Now I'll just bring over the cutter one more time and make sure that I'm happy with how it looks. My head keeps getting in at this point because I have to be able to see. But I'll basically just check if they're symmetrical. There we are. Quite happy with that. Now I'll bring over my blade and just gently pick this up. Just smooth off the sides. Get rid of any little bits that might be lying around. And that's the front. And I've got a little piece of paper over here that I'm putting on. Now I'm going to put on this way up because you don't want the bale to be sitting flat on your paper because then. Your bead will distort and your bale will flatten, which is something you do not want to happen. So make sure that you're putting it this way onto your piece of paper. Now another thing that I just want to mention is you do want to be baking on a piece of paper because you don't want shiny spots on the front of your bead. So I'll put those in the oven for a good hour at Primo's recommend, wait, no, Kato's recommended temperature because there's actually very little Primo in here because we put a lot of Kato in there so 
it will do just fine at Kato's recommended temperature and for a full hour and then I'll come back and show you how to finish with the sides. So here they are now that they are baked. Now I had a little bit of an accident with this one. Now that I have a look, if you can see it's um, not symmetrical when I took it out of the oven it was a little bit soft because when you take these out of the oven they, they can be soft and so it warped a little bit when I took it out of the oven. So this one we won't be using. I saw what happened with that one and so I left this one to cool and so this one's nice and symmetrical still. So that's just a thing to remember, don't take them out before they've cooled down. But so anyway, now that they are out of the oven we can fix up the edges and the way I'm going to be doing that is I'm going to take a little bit of silver clay I'm just going to warm it up in my hands, roll it into a sausage and pop it on the end like that and then I'm going to smear it along the edge just like that. It's super easy and it fixes up the edge perfectly. It's one of my favourite finishing techniques. So you can see that edge versus that edge is much better. So I'll do the same on all of the other edges and then I will bake that for half an hour at Kato's recommended temperature to make sure that it's fully baked as you want to bake your piece for at least an hour to make sure that it is properly baked otherwise you can run into issues. And then I can show you how to sand and finish it. So now that it is out of the oven, we can move on to sanding it. So, I'll bring over my polishing papers. Now I'm just going to be using the 400 for the moment. It goes all the way up to a um, 8000 actually. So the white one's the 8000. But you want to start with your lowest grit, which in this case is a 400. And you want to sand the edges of your bead, the front of the bead and the back. So I keep a whole pad over here because I find that it makes my sanding much easier. It just makes it more comfortable. So I'll just sit here and sand from the, high, from the lowest script all the way up to the highest script. And then I can show you how to put Renaissance wax on the back and the sides. And then we can move on to putting resin on it. So now we are ready to move on to the resin pot. So I'm going to use this ice resin plunger that I got from Linda's Art Spot because it allows me to mix small amounts, which is all I need today, since I've already done most of the beads in my last resining. Okay, so what I want to do, gently move this down, here we are. And then I'm going to press on the plunger with even force. And let all of the drips drain off so that you make sure that you get an even amount. Then bring this back over, click into place and slide it closed. And now you have a whole bunch of resin in there and it was all measured out perfectly for you. Then I'll just take my skewer and mix this up because I don't need much resin here. Okay. And this is what's nice about that plunger. You can mix as much or as little as you want, which is great. And it measures it up perfectly for you so you don't have to worry about anything so it's if you use a little bit of resin or you only want or you need only a tiny amount of resin it's a nice thing to have in the back when I am mixing a lot of resin I like to just use the bottles because I use a lot of resin so I like to use the bottles most of the time but some of the time I only need a tiny amount of resin so I like to have that thing as a little backup instead of having to mix more resin than I need and if, for instance, you don't really use resin that much and you only need a tiny amount every now and then, those plungers will go quite a long way for you. 
So I'm just making sure to mix that all up. And then once you've mixed it all up thoroughly, um, you want to let this rest. Now it's summer here at the moment, so it's really hot for me. So this um, resin is quite warm, which means that um, it's going to cure faster, but it also means that it's it's not as thick as it would be if it was cold. So we're going to let that rest for a tiny amount of time and these bubbles will float to the surface. And in the meantime, I'll bring over the resining mat. So here is the resining mat and I'm sorry about that awful colour, but can't do much about it. And here's the resin. So I'm just going to wipe off my stick and I'm going to bring over this little straw and blow. So let me see if I can get that for you on camera. Actually, I prefer the wider end. And that gets rid of most of the bubbles. So now we're ready to resin our bead. Okay, so now we're ready to resin this. And so I'm going to pop it on the side of this because the bail on the back will cause issues otherwise. And we'll bring over our ice resin and pour that on top. And now I'm just going to leave it like this and I'm going to see if it's level. So I can see whether it's level or not. So this is going forward this way. So I need to prop this up a bit more. Okay, that's level. So I've actually popped the bale into one of these grooves over here. Because you want your bead to be level, otherwise your ice resin can end up not covering the entire bead. So now I'm just busy spreading that little bit of ice resin that we poured onto the edges. And then we can add more to create a dome later. So only add as much as you think you need. Add less than you think you need. Spread it around, see if you need more, and add that more. Because you can always add more, but you can't really take away the resin. So it's better to add less and then add more as you need it. So I want a nice dome on this, so I'm going to just use up all of that resin. We don't need that much. So I'd say that was about one and a half mils to two mils of resin that went on here. There we go. We'll get a nice dome from that. Okay, so now I'm going to pop this aside to cure, and this can go aside and cure for 24 hours, and then that will basically be it. Okay, so our bead is finished curing, and here is what it looks like now that we have covered it with the resin. And here's what the back looks like. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now that's basically it for this bonus project. Um, you guys can string it on whatever you want. I was thinking maybe hemp would look quite nice. Uh, maybe even Kamehameha, but I think hemp would probably look nice with the multiple strands and everything. So I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. And if it was, please do let me know. And please do send me in photos if you do use this tutorial, as I always love to see that. You can send that in through the website jessimatutorials.com or you can send it, you can tag me in a Facebook or Instagram post as I'm on both of those social media sites. And as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now!